Good morning, guys. Okay, right. <laughs> this is about the 16th time, no word of a lie, guys. This is about the 16th time I've tried to make this video today. Right. I want to talk to you, I want to talk to you all this morning about KDA and GNOME. Now, basically, KDA and GNOME are attached to the Linux operating system, okay? And for a lot of people that want to try and dip their feet into Linux, because it is quite daunting whenever you want to move over from an operating system that you're completely happy with, or even if you're not happy with it, but you're just used to it, like Windows users and stuff like that. Um, if you want to dip your feet into another, uh, another operating system, it is quite daunting at this present time and moment to, 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 to delve into Linux. But for those of you that have never done it or are thinking of doing it, this is the reason why I want to explain KDA and them. Now, when Linux is the operating system and it has many different distributions like SUSE, Red Hat, Mandrake, um, Ubuntu, they're all separate distributions of the Linux operating system. And with all of those, you can either run KDA or GNOME. Now when you're installing some of them, you'll get the option. And then some of them, you don't get the option. Uh, I'm not too sure what they are. I know with SUSE, because uh, I've just installed SUSE 11.3, <coughs> you get the option of installing the KDA desktop environment or the GNOME desktop environment. Okay? And a lot of people get confused about this when they're in the middle of install or at the beginning of installing Linux, they think they're installing an operating system, which they are, and then all of a sudden they get asked, do they want to install KDA or GNOME? And a lot of people think, well, you know, I'm, I'm installing this operating system. What what are what is KDA and what is GNOME? So hopefully today I'll be able to help people that are maybe interested in jumping into Linux or have got a Linux distribution and not really too sure what KDA or GNOME is. No. I There's not really a lot of difference between the two on the surface. Obviously, whenever you deep delve deep down, you know, further deep down into the kernel, no, or not the kernel, the you know, the the toolkits and stuff like that there that are used with these uh, graphical user interfaces, uh, it becomes a lot more complicated and, and then you would see a lot more different different differences, sorry. Uh, but I'm just gonna go over the surface, okay? But before I do that, I'll just briefly explain how Linux came about and the history with Linux and then that will lead straight into the, the KDA and GNOME thing. In 1969, the, the Unix environment was developed at AT&T Bell Labs by two people called Ken Thompson and Dennis Rich. Now they developed, like I say, they developed it there for about 10 years, but around about 1974, they had come up with the fourth version of Unix, but this time, it was written in a language called C, which I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with. Because this version was written in C, this was quite groundbreaking for Unix, because then it allowed Unix to be taken out of the AT&T Bell Labs and used elsewhere, so it made it a much more portable operating system, which is um, what happened next. Berkeley University of California, they came in and got hold of this Unix environment, took it with them, and tweaked it to their needs, and they came up, and they obviously renamed that BSD. But there was a license, you know, when, when, Linux, when Unix came out and was developed, there was obviously strict license and agreements. They couldn't just give it off to anybody or anything at all like that. But people that were working in and around the Unix environment in, in Berkeley, especially in Berkeley uh, and uh, in MIT when the Homebrew uh, Club started up, they, they wanted to um, have all this stuff for free and open it up more to more and more people to, to be able to use. Now at first, the Unix environment was incredibly difficult to use. It didn't have a graphical user interface, it was all command line. And then around about 1993, a joint venture between uh, IBM, some microsystems, HP and the Unix system laboratories, they all came together and they created what was called a CDE, which was a common desktop environment. Now that was a graphical user interface for Unix basically, and it made it a little bit more simple for run-of-the-mill people to use instead of these boffins that were using it all before then. But it still wasn't a finished article, and this was done in 1993, so don't forget, when the Microsoft had already had Windows 3.0 out for three years, and two years coming, Windows 95 was coming out, so CDA was still quite primitive. Now, in terms of the Unix and stuff they got, and what was going on in MIT and Berkeley, uh, a guy called Richard Stallman, he 
created the GNU project in 1983. I believe it was in MIT. He, so the, this project was f uh, founded in 1983 and basically what this was, this was the free software movement. Richard Stallman was the father of the free software movement. Now not to be confused with the open software movement because that is a little bit different from this free software movement and that will become a little bit more apparent when I talk more about the KDA and the GNOME. Uh, then in 1991, Linus Torvalds, Linus Torvalds or whatever you want to call him, in 1991 in Helsinki University, he had a version of the CDE uh, for Unix and he was trying to, to develop that and make that even more simpler and easier. So he was sending out emails to a lot of people saying that he had developed Linux, but Linux even, even then, Linux was still in its infancy. It was still quite uh, a difficult operating system to you know, navigate around and stuff like that. It wasn't until 1996 that the first proper desktop environment for Linux was born, and that was KDE. Now, KDE was developed by a guy called Mathis Etrich, I think it is. I probably, I'm probably crucifying that name. In, one year later, in 1997, GNOME was brought about, and that was brought. One of the co-founders of GNOME was Miguel, Miguel de la Casa. Again, I'm murdering this name, guys, but it'll be down in the description part. To be honest with you, it's incredibly complicated whenever you start delving into the different licenses agreements that came whenever your, the GNOME project started and the KDE project started. But basically, one was open source and one was free source, and they, and they, and they just, although they agreed with 90% of, of what each other were doing, they didn't agree wholeheartedly. So that's why they were both started. So, what are the differences between the two? <clears throat> well, basically the KDE uh, desktop environment, that is a much more feature-rich environment. Uh, for someone just jumping into Linux now, the, the KDE environment is a lot more like uh, Mac and Windows in terms of customizing your desktop, that type of thing. You know, it comes with a lot of themes and wallpapers, that type of thing. Um, the, the settings and all the rest of it are it's the same type of format as Windows and um, Mac whereas the GNOME is a little bit more simplistic but no the, the GNOME desktop environment is, a, is supposedly a lot more stable now KDE is incredibly stable you see because th this is the whole reason why Linux was for, founded in any case because the Unix environment is one of the most stable environments around a friend of mine told I only got into Unix because a friend of mine had said when he was in the RAF that in the control towers they used the Unix desktop environment for landing planes and stuff like that because obviously they, Windows was not reliable, still isn't reliable enough really I suppose to, to, to put people's lives in, at, in your hands and land planes and control towers. I might be wrong about that nowadays but that's certainly not the case with the RAF. The RAF used Unix because of its stability which is how Linux has come around, and even the Mac uh, operating system is founded on the Unix environment as well, which is probably why a lot of people say that the Mac OS X is a lot more stable than Windows. Anyway, I'm digressing. So KDA and GNOME, the KDA is a lot more frilly, I suppose, than, than GNOME is, and GNOME's got a, it's a lot more simplistic. It's got a lot more stability surrounding it. Um, to date, KDE has had four versions, and GNOME has only had two versions, two major versions. Obviously, it's had frequent updates and that type of thing, but to date, major versions, GNOME has had two, and KDE has had four. Uh, also, in terms of integration, KDE is much more integrated with Mac and Windows, and that is to do with the Qt toolkit that was used for KDE, whereas the GNOME environment you can there is a little bit of integration between Mac and Windows with the GNOME desktop environment, but it's a little bit flaky. It's not very stable when the integration thing comes into play. In terms of applications, now this this one doesn't really matter that much, really. But in terms of applications with Linux, there's a lot more applications coming around now in terms of quality and quantity. In terms of KDE. The KDE applications are built within the KDE project, so therefore whenever you open a KDE application, 
on the KD desktop environment, you can see that it blends in. It's kind of like, uh, the, you know, like Final, I suppose Final Cut or Aperture, any of those programs. If they were able to run on any desktop environment, you, if you put it on a Windows environment, you could see that it was built in the Apple, or sorry, in the uh, OS X environment. So that's the type of thing I'm talking about. Uh, and that's really about it guys, there's not big differences between them, but that's basically what they are, the desktop environments, KDE, no, KDE is much more uh, customizable, set up in the same, similar method to Windows and Mac, uh, whereas GNOME is more for stability and very, very simplistic. Linux is a really good operating system, if you get into it and you take the time and the patience to um, learn about it, use it trial and error I suppose. If you have a spare laptop lying around or or an old desktop or something like that, you put it they're, they're free. I've just downloaded Susie the eleven point three for free uh, and used it and um, you don't really have anything to lose by putting it on partitioning a hard drive and putting it on. It's a really good way to further your knowledge on operating systems and that type of thing. Anyway guys, this has gone on way too long for what I wanted to do so thanks very much for listening and I hope to see you all very soon and I hope to have another video up for the next couple of days so speak to you all later and take care bye